the place where the water is probably initiating from. So that first pipe we'll know to go out and grid that section and start looking for areas that uh, water can get into, into our system. A sample of uh, what the SCADA system is going to look like. There's going to be a bunch of monitors around. So all the plants will have access to this data. All the plants will have access to, to data from the other facilities. They'll also have access to the data from the lift stations and the collection system. They may ask, why would the treatment plant need to know that? So if the lift station starts to uh, starts to ramp up and have excessive flows coming in, the automation now will be able to send that information before the plant had to wait until it saw those excessive flows coming in. It won't have to wait any longer. So it knows that a treatment that a lift station is sending the flow and start to send excess flow. The plant can start making adjustments to itself to accommodate those flows when they get there. Also. Uh, our staff's working on ways to manage that flow. So, if, uh, you know, we talked about the early, earlier, with Nakuchi was getting 30 million gallons of flow. Mud Creek was only getting six to seven million gallons of flow. The uh, staff's working on ways to manage that flow. So, if with Nakuchi or Mud Creek be begin to become over overwhelmed, we can redirect that flow and send it to the other. If I could add here, almost the system. Uh, I just, I just wanted to add to that that. That you know we're under a five-year EPD consent order right now. Uh, we expanded the minimum the minimum requirements that EPD uh, suggested for us on this case. We expanded it to like Carol said, every lift station. Uh, we just felt that was important for the reasons he just said. So we can start to redirect the flow as soon as we see it. We're not trying to correct the problem once it gets to the plant. Because when it gets to the plant, yeah, it's hard to it's hard to correct that problem. So now. Uh, we're going to be able to redirect the flow and not have that problem. And we're hoping to have that up and going in the junior to go out of the So your concentration is all the right work? In, in I, I, I have our concentration right now. That's that's yes, sir. Yeah, during our conversation with EPG, that's not that. Right water in the system is the, is the issue. So that's where our focus is going to be. And we have solid performance in the treatment facilities. We have solid performance in the lift stations. The next thing to tackle is keeping that those excessive flows from getting into the sanitary sewer system. And I know it sounds strange when we say at our December rain event that the plant worked. The plant itself worked. The process it was supposed to, as Daryl explained earlier, that worked. But the I and I is the problem. And that's what we're going to concentrate on um, to keep that from happening. Because the plant did everything. It, was, it didn't shut down, it didn't stop working. It's just. Uh, as a result, we had a, from that plant, we had two, two in 2018. Both of them back to major management? Uh, no, one was a issue. First got one first opened up the new Well, it was, it was after, to answer your question, yes, it was after a major rain event, but uh, something broke. We had a gasket, I believe, uh, it was a 42-inch pipe that connected to that basin. There was an O-ring, a $50 O-ring that was in there. When it was installed, it got cramped or pinched or something by the contractor. When the pressure got on it, the O-ring let go. And it, uh, and it but the rain events we had through the three major hurricanes here, we had no problem. No, no, nothing with the three, the three hurricanes that jumped with uh, quite a bit of water on the ground. Yeah, those, everything, those plants operated from have right. you seen a major difference in the cold water contamination since you've done your, your work on the manholes and stuff? I mean, do y'all have any way to monitor that? Yeah, yeah. Um, yes, we get more flow. You know, that work was done out in the collection system to keep from having releases in the residential area, in town, right there in town. So the system, the hydraulics of the system worked tremendously better. So all of that flow that made it to the plant, that probably would have backed up somewhere in the system and we'd have a release there. But well, my question is, have you seen a reduction in rainwater? Flows? That's really hard to gauge. You know, we don't have any monitoring inside the manholes themselves right now. 
But once we get the flow of information, we'll be able to uh, we'll be able to see those changes. There are other stations right now. We uh, you know we have uh, we're, we base we're calculating our flow from pump curves and current power utilization, and uh, we know we can do, get a lot more accurate information once we get uh, the flow data and install on the data system. One thing also that this system does is gives us. And I keep talking about redundancy, and you guys probably heard me say it three or four times, but. Now that's that's what the sewer collection and water distribution systems live on redundancy. The way the architecture of this system is going to be designed, if any of those systems go down, uh, you won't see a blip in the operation of the plant. If the Fuji plant goes down, the, the uh, skate system goes down there that is operating it, uh, Mud Creek or the water treatment plant even, the service there will automatically pick up and start, start running those processes and monitoring those processes. So if someone goes out there and cuts the wire that's uh, feeding that, this wireless system is going to keep keep on trucking. So, uh, that's and why we went ahead and expanded what EPD wanted to do and put out our apps for water plant. Like Errol said, so we can have as much redundancy built in as we possibly can. Okay. Uh, you did say something about different sizes of pipes, 24 to 16, but I think what you showed that line is called insipid form, isn't it? Uh, so insipid form is a form of doing it, but that's not the, we use cured in place, the CIPD. It's uh, basically, it's, uh, you know, we, we drag a, uh, a yeah. PVC product into the line and we inject the chemical and expand it, yeah. it here's, but it's similar, it's very, very similar to that process. This is some of the monitoring equipment that's going to connect to our SCADA system that's going to allow us to uh, monitor the flows in those manholes. So you know, when we see, you know, for instance, in this particular instance, and this was a particular example, this was a retention pond here in the bottom. It was connected into our sewer system. So you know, you're right around after a major rain event and you see a retention pond that's empty, and everything else is flooded, and it's a good spot to start. So uh, found a connection uh, that someone that placed from that retention pond into our sanitary sewer system so that their property wouldn't flood. So uh, those, are, those are the types, some of the things that we have to go out there and find. But we're finding them. Uh, the one here at the top was also an example of uh, us, us a breach in the system where water was getting into our system. But, that these marking systems are going to allow us to quickly identify those. This is an example of a pond that's going to be constructed out there. You see the thing's pretty large. Uh, Eight million gallons of retention time for excessive stormwater flows. Uh, is that the one you're talking about here, the permanent pole? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, initial estimates in about $1.84 million right now to get that constructed. Uh, but, you know, we stand ready to do it. That we jump through all the portals that we need to do to make sure that we get it designed so that it uh, does exactly what we want to do, and that's protect the water in the state. Is, is that funded at 1.84? Yes. And when do you anticipate that to be completed? Just yes. I would hope uh, there's probably six to eight months of digging of construction there and building uh, and getting products. I would hope to have that done. By the beginning, of, uh, by the end of the fall, uh, it kind of has to address it. But uh, October, November, -ish, I would suspect. I would hope. All right. Uh, this is some other structures and uh, some goals and objectives for uh, for the utility. Uh, additional power generating at the network and uh, with the Gucci. We have a power generator out there right now, a mobile unit that we rolled out there. We put in the effort out of the budget to get some permanent power out there. Uh, this unit will go into bypass mode, but we know we can run more efficiently when it's operating. Uh, this brings out any, any debris that's coming in, any uh, paper and plastic that are coming into the system. Uh, this allows us to uh, flow more through the plant because it reduces how quickly the filters will become closed if those papers and plastics 
made it all the way through the pandemic. 